Hey guys, so in this video, I want to discuss a pretty interesting topic that I thought a lot of you guys might enjoy, and that is whether or not optimal keybinds are overrated. Now, by overrated, I basically mean putting too much weight on having the most optimal keybinds, and that in the grand scheme of things, some players might just be better without them. So the question at hand is if that's true or not. Before we jump into the discussion though, it only makes sense to actually define optimal keybinds and explain what they are. Optimal keybinds are not a set of specific keybinds that everyone should use. Rather, it's a set of guidelines or a sort of philosophy to follow in order to select keybinds. Rule number one is to put as many keybinds as you can off your index and ring finger, and instead onto your thumbs and pinky. This means using your mouse buttons, left shift, and C or V. Rule number two is if you have to put them on your index and or ring finger, then put them as close as you can to WASD. So these are keys like E, F, Q, and R. The last rule is to do your best to spread your keybinds out on separate fingers. So while using your thumb is optimal, you don't wanna put all of your builds on it. Those three rules together define optimal keybinds. But what does optimal even mean in this context? The answer is that quote unquote optimal keybinds are supposed to enable you to build faster and have more control of your movement. You guys know this, but on keyboard and mouse, most people move around by pressing WASD. What this means is that anytime you go to press a building bind you have on your index or ring finger, you're forced to let go of your A or D key in order to press it. Whenever I go to build a wall and press Q with my ring finger, I can't hit my A key to move and strafe left. This can potentially lead to awkward situations in box fights, and it means you don't have full control of your movement. If you did, you'd never have to let go of WASD, hence rule number one. The other aspect of being optimal is that it's supposed to allow you to build faster and quicker. By having different builds on different fingers and having them close to WASD, you can technically hit your different build binds quicker than someone who needs to hit all of them with one finger can. This is the same exact reasoning behind double edit key binds and why editing with two separate edit keys is faster than one. Now, you might be thinking, that all sounds pretty darn good, right? Why wouldn't you want to switch to optimal keybinds? Well, it comes down to the age-old dilemma of theory versus practice. In theory, yes, optimal keybinds are better in every single way you can think of. But in practice, it doesn't always pan out that way. Some of the fastest and cleanest builders in the world have extremely unoptimal keybinds. The World Cup champion Senbuga builds and edits entirely with his index finger. Mr. Savage does the same, but his binds are ridiculously far away from WASD. He has his ramp on T, his floor on G, and he edits with Y. I can't even reach my Y key if I tried to. Some other good examples are Liquid Stretch and Ghost Wifo. Both are absolutely insane builders that would dump on me every day of the week in a 1v1. The only reason I mention that is because they use their F keys to build. If you don't know what those are, your F keys are the function keys all the way at the top of your keyboard that you've probably never hit in your life. These keys are so insanely far away from WASD that it hurts me to even think about someone using them or to watch it like in this video. By the way, the reason people use F keys as keybinds are because those are the first keybinds you're given by default when you start the game. Most people switch off of them at some point, but evidently not everyone. Now, in theory, I should be able to build faster than Thwaifo and Stretch because my keybinds are way more optimal. In practice though, it's not true at all. Even if I put in as many hours as these guys did on my current binds, there's no doubt in my mind both of them would still be better and faster builders. But wouldn't they be even faster than they currently are if they used optimal keybinds? That's a great question. As much as I want to say yes and that they should switch, 
I'm gonna have to say no. The first reason is that being comfortable on your keybinds is much more important than being optimal. If you have no problem hitting G to edit and it doesn't feel awkward for you or you mess up with it, then yeah, maybe you don't need to change it to E. The thing is, for many people like me, optimal keybinds are more comfortable. I edited with C when I first switched over to keyboard and mouse and it took me around 3 or 4 months to finally realize it was holding my editing and my mechanics back. I had a ton of trouble making quick consecutive edits and chaining it with my cone bind which was on X. Then, when I finally was smart enough to switch to E, it immediately felt more comfortable, even with no muscle memory built up on it. What I've come to realize though, is that this is not the case for everyone. I always advise using left shift as a building bind because of how great it is for your movement, yet I use it as crouch. If I could, I would use left control for crouch and left shift as my cone bind. The reason I don't is because I literally can't get my pinky to bend down and hit control. When I do, it gives me the worst pain because I broke it playing basketball a few years ago. This is something specific to me and my weird messed up hand. But what I'm trying to get at here is that everyone's keybind preference is unique in their own way. You might have really short fingers that can't reach your number keys, or you might have really long alien fingers that can reach all the way up to number 7. The point is, you don't ever want to force yourself to use a keybind that's uncomfortable to you for the sake of it being optimal. As long as it's comfortable to you and it doesn't hinder your gameplay in any way, then it's good enough to use as a keybind. That brings up my next point, that past a certain building speed, it doesn't really matter how much faster you can hit your keybinds. It's more about how you can use the builds you place, how accurately you place them, and how fast you can move your crosshair around, aka your mouse speed. Take for example, doing a 90. Your 90s are not going to get faster just because you changed your floor key bind from Z to your mouse button. Your movement will definitely improve, and it might be more comfortable to do a 90 this way, but pressing your floor a millisecond faster than you could before will not make a difference while building. It does for editing, but not for building. Like I said before, how quickly you can whip around your mouse to place everything is much more important than actually pressing the keybinds themselves. The last major reason comes down to time and effort. These top tier pros who are competing every single week don't have the time to completely revamp their keybinds. If they really wanted to, I believe they could, but it would take a lot of sacrifice and effort for something that might not even make them that much better. On top of that, many of them have actually adapted to any sort of downfall their keybinds can have. For example, Booga's movement never seems awkward even though it should be hard for him to strafe left while building. What he said once in a stream was that he's learned to quickly tap D in between builds to counteract any movement problems. His teammate Stretch also has done the same thing when he edits. Since his builds are so far away from WASD, he almost always edits with his blueprints out. Most people, like me, never practice this way and instead swap to our pickaxes before we edit. Stretch though doesn't have time to go to his pickaxe, so instead he keeps his blueprints out. These things just go to show that top players with unoptimal binds have made tiny optimizations to help themselves out. So, while it may seem like they should switch, not only are they more comfortable on and prefer their current keybinds, but they've also learned to effectively play around their downfalls and become better on them than most people would. That leaves us with one final question. Should you, the person watching, change their keybinds? Not Booga or Thwaifo or Stretch, but you. Yes you, should you switch yours? In general, I think you should. This may seem weird considering everything I just mentioned, but hear me out for a second. Unless you're consistently placing in tournaments or signed to a pro team, then you are not at the same level as the guys I just mentioned before are. Those guys are pure freaks of nature that shouldn't be the reason you don't switch. 
because in reality, most pros actually do have good keybinds. Mongrel has good keybinds, Benji Fishy has good keybinds, Cloxy has good keybinds. More pros have good and optimal keybinds than really bad or unoptimal ones. So to kind of sum it all up, if you consider yourself a good builder, and you're completely comfortable with your current keybinds, then as long as they don't hinder you in any way, you don't have to change them. However, if you aren't completely comfortable with them, or you're on the fence about it, then switch. I was also hesitant at first, but optimizing my binds was easily the best decision I've ever made. My building and editing is 10 times faster than before, and everything I do feels better and more natural. So for the majority of you guys watching, I highly recommend switching to optimal keybinds and never looking back. Overall boys, those are my thoughts on optimal keybinds. I would love to hear what you guys have to say on the subject and whether or not you guys use optimal keybinds or not. So if you enjoy the video, then do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to each and every one of you using code Jerrion. Remember to keep sending me pictures of you using my code on Twitter or Instagram, and I will be sure to shout you out. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.